Okay, well, welcome everyone. Uh, for this session, uh, three principals of the lead, uh, leading schools of Sri Lanka and the provincial uh, officers have connected with us. So in the first round, I would like to uh, know, the audience will like to know your, uh, your, 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 your institu institu institutional uh, uh, overview in very brief. Maybe starting from the Mr. Ansaf. Yeah, I'm from a sub uh, regional level actually. Uh, a province, we have nine provinces in Sri Lanka. Uh, so I'm from Sabrakama province. Uh, to get an idea, I, ju I can just say we have around uh, uh, 25,000 of uh, teacher population and uh, around uh, 300,000 plus. Uh, actually 350,000 uh, students population and we have around uh, 1,100 plus schools we are managing so it's kind of a regional setup we have in Sri Lanka. I am Sampath Terakode, the principal of the SNNI College, one of the leading uh, boys school in Sri Lanka. Uh, there are 6,000 students are there and also 270 staff, altogether 360 academic and non-academic staff are there. Uh, before, before, I, uh, before I came to the, come to the DSNNI college, I, am the, I, I was the principal of Richmond College School. It is the most leading school in Southern province, and also the principal of Prince of Wales College, more to And also I, I, I have now uh, 28 years experience of teacher service and administration service. I am, the, I am also a SLES class one officer. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Sumeda Jayavira, Principal, Sirimao Bandarnak, Vidyare Kalambu 7. Uh, my school consists of uh, 3,700 students, academic staff 167, and non-academic 35. So other than that, actually there are nearly 8,000 network working with the school as parents, well-wishers, and the community. Uh, so I have been working as a biology teacher for 10 years. After that, I completed, I uh, uh, entered to the Sri Lanka Education Administrative Service based on the competitive examination. So uh, I uh, had been working as the deputy principal of DSNIK Vidyalaya and uh, middle school principal of Royal College and uh, vice principal of Thurston College. After that, I joined St. Paul's Girls School Milagiriya Kalambu 5 at the principal uh, I worked there for nine years, then very recently, the eight months back, I joined as the principal of Sirimavo Bandaranayaka Vidyalaya. So being a principal of uh, nearly 20 years in one of the leading girls' schools uh, and boys' schools as well, I feel the data management and collecting data and uh, the uses of the data is still in actually the facing challenges in Sri Lanka. So uh, I am very uh, thankful to uh, uh, Mrs. Dakshina and uh, the ministry people for actually inviting us to share our thoughts with, uh, with you all. Thank you. I am Mano Misenayuratna, principal of Isaka Vidyalaya. Uh, nearly 5,000 students, we have nearly 5,000 students and uh, teachers, uh, we have, there are 225 teachers and uh, 100 non-academic staff and uh, so uh, actually uh, we, we use in uh, NEMIS also and NEMIS, uh, actually we are facing challenges in uh, collecting data. Um, I have, uh, in myself, I have been uh, work, working, uh, I, I have been worked uh, to the Department of Examination for the 14 years. So I worked with data uh, more than nearly 15 years. So uh, actually I, I know uh, the importance of uh, data management and uh, data analysis. Uh, so uh, this is the very uh, effectful and it's a, a useful conference and academy. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. 
First of all, introducing myself, uh, I'm Kem Prabhani and I'm representing Southern Province, uh, which is a regional level. And uh, in my career, I have uh, served uh, more than 10 years in the education sector. And in my province, uh, there are more than 30,000, nearly 30,000 teachers and also uh, nearly 2,000 principals. And uh, uh, when considering my uh, province, there are 11 educational zones and 39 uh, educational divisions. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, since time is uh, limits, uh, I directly forward it into the first question. So, uh, this is uh, more focusing on the principles. Uh, in your experience, uh, what are the methods that you used in your institu institutions and the, what are the data types you are currently uh, collected by the Sri Lankan schools? Actually, we are uh, in our school, we are using the uh, data in the students' uh, performances, then uh, term test data and the national examinations data. Uh, so other thing is that we have uh, teacher, teacher attendance systems, then, then uh, resources, um, then the information of parents, and that kind of data, we, we are collecting that, that type of data. So we have uh, the attendance system and the other thing is uh, we are collecting uh, data regarding uh, students, uh, sport, the, the, they are doing extracurricular activities and these data we have. Okay. Uh. Um. Actually, in schools, we are collecting data because actually we want to get evidence-based decisions. For evidence-based decision-making, we are collecting different type of, type of data in schools. Uh, sometimes we collect qualitative data and as well as quantitative data both. The quantitatively, we are collecting demographical data. And other than that, we are collecting the students' details, that means performance data, uh, not only the quantitative data like uh, marks, uh, achievements, uh, numbers, we are collecting the quant uh, qualitative data, it's actually we use thematic base because actually qualitative data is very important for schools to take evidence-based decisions on students. So therefore we are collecting uh, their performance based on the thematic approach and we collect uh, health information and the students who need counseling and their uh, uh, actually the feelings and thoughts like quantitative, uh, qualitative data. So other than that, we use so many softwares to manage uh, quantitative data in a standard manner. So we are using the special software to analyze our students' performance, not only the uh, term test marks, at uh, national level examination uh, results as well. So uh, other than that, we use the students' uh, information, the private, inf actually the very personal information as well. So we keep privacy on the data at school. So, so many softwares we are conducting in school to collect data to keep their privacy. So, based on the, those data, uh, we could identify the students' mindsets and what kind of support we need to give for them, not only for the uh, exam achievements, not only for past examinations, to uh, live as a happy person and how to support other children and how many dropouts we are waiting. So we want to stop dropouts from school. So uh, it's actually diverse uh, uh, a mechanism to collect data in schools, Conti and Collie. So mainly we are very uh, careful with collecting data from students. Sometimes we use Google Form for that. And other than that, we are personally meet students to collect data because some data they are reluctant to uh, 
fill in forms. So conducting a school, collection of data and using that data and making decisions based on the evidence, uh, based on our data is very important. So it make a big impact on students. Therefore, the reliability and correct data, the data should be reliable and uh, very correct. Otherwise, we cannot get uh, good decisions. But we are really worried about sometimes the different, different institutions ask ad hoc uh, collecting of data is a really a headache for schools. We have the data uh, management system and school. Another thing is we don't have, uh, not only in our school, uh, when you talk about uh, the most of the leading schools, we have a big number of students, teachers and the stakeholders, but we do not have enough staff facility to maintain our data. Thank you. I agreed with Nanomis and Sumedha's thoughts, so I, I want to tell special two things about the data collection and uh, data collection areas. Especially, we use data collecting and also analyzing and implementing about the sports, especially cricket and ruggers. Our school is main, our school main games are cricket and also rugger. We use data collecting and also analyzing for cricket, rugby, and other badminton and other Uri sports in our school, especially there are 28 sports are there. And so, second thing is we, we, uh, we, we are doing a RFID system. RFID means radio frequency identification system. Uh, it is a, it's used in our school for in-out card and also a, a data collecting system. Uh, it is very um, important for our students and also parents and also for, for us to collect data and also analyzing and after that implement implementing especially parents are very li lucky to for that we we are doing now in grade 8 9 and 10 students for that rfid uh, system so in these two systems are especially sports and also rfid system we use to collect data and analyzing and implement it for that. Thank you. Okay, sir. We got uh, very, very, very valuable insights. So uh, I am focusing on the next question. This is more focusing on the provincial officers. So, what are the your biggest challenges? What are the biggest challenges you face during the data collections, and what are what are the uh, steps you taken to recover or the, resolve those issues? Yeah, actually. Uh when I'm talking about the challenges, uh, first of all, I will just give one instance. Uh, as, I, as I already said, we have around 36,000 employees uh, in our province. And out of that, 25,000 employees are from education. And uh, rest 8,000 employees are from nearly edu um, health. So um, all the other institutions are making around uh, 3,000. So, the biggest two largest sectors, education is the largest one, and then uh, we have the health. Uh, and uh, if we think about the challenges, we have various level challenges. I'm focusing on the provincial level. I would like to highlight few uh, operational uh, level challenges. The biggest one is actually reliability of the data. So uh, in many instances, we, uh, we collect data from various levels, for example, fr from the schools and from the a zonal or divisional level, second and th third layers. Uh, so uh, we are collecting same same data uh, for several purposes, but uh, we find that the same data comes in different values. So the reliability is a big issue, and uh, I think there are some. Uh, the basic reason is that uh, sort of a, a, a data. Uh, sensitivity or uh, data literacy is not much uh, within our system. So in the school level or in the upper levels, data sensitivity is very much uh, low. So they think that the, the we have around 1,000 schools. If one school makes uh, one percentage error, when it accumulates, it's a big error. So do, those type of uh, data uh, sensitivity is uh, not with our uh, system. And uh, 
we don't have an integrated platform, so that's a huge issue in our uh, sector. So we, we have several uh, platforms, several uh, systems, which are not in integrated. So we, we used to uh, collect data, the same data, uh, again and again from different platforms. So the, it's not integrated. So it's a huge issue. As uh, Principal Madam and Sir said, uh, sometimes it's a huge issue for the schools to manage because the same data they have to give it uh, with various platforms. And uh, one more uh, thing to highlight, we have uh, human resource uh, issues as well. Uh, we have, uh, actually teachers are managing to uh, input the data, so for the uh, big scale schools they can manage, for the lower level schools it's a little bit difficult to manage uh, the human resource. And we have physical resource as well, but it's a common thing. Uh, just I highlighted few important uh, process uh, level challenges. And I think uh, Ms. Prabhani will uh, tell about the uh, suggestions. Yes, uh, I think uh, as Mr. Ansaf said, uh, there are many more uh, challenges that we face as provincial officers. As uh, uh, Principal Madam said, she, she's also having certain uh, issues in school level. So in provincial level uh, as well, we have uh, several issues. So actually, Mr. Gasseta wanted to get some certain suggestions to overcome the, uh, such challenges. So I will take that. So um, uh, the, uh, the major thing, what I tell is, we should have a proper plan actually. So there should be a very good architecture uh, when, we, uh, uh, when we prepare actually databases and uh, systems, we should have a proper plan. So uh, first of all, we have to think that what are the data that we are going to collect and which scale and what are the insights that we are going to take and uh, how, uh, how, uh, what is the scale actually. So if we consider all these things, I think we can have a good, uh, good data system. Otherwise what we do is sometimes we do certain things in an ad hoc manner. So we don't have uh, such a proper plan and uh, uh, in certain cases we uh, gather ad hoc data. So first of all there should be a good plan and the, the other thing is the awareness actually. So all the stakeholders, uh, actually uh, the customers, uh, as customers are teachers, uh, maybe uh, students, maybe other officers, they all should be aware of the uh, system that we are going to uh, uh, prepare and what we are going to do. So and uh, we have to uh, uh, aware them very well. So. And we have to get their feedback actually, their suggestions, uh, their views. We have to collect these things and we have to think and sometimes we can uh, refer uh, the certain uh, research data also. So we can have a good, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we, can, we should refer all these things and we should have a good discussion with all the stakeholders in the system. If we take our country, so all the ministry level, provincial level, uh, any other regional level and school level, we all should sit, sit and discuss before we uh, prepare a data system. So uh, that is one concern. So if we do these things, as Mr. Ansaf said, uh, we can't avoid such uh, data duplications actually. So sometimes what we see is uh, in a provincial level certain uh, uh, data requirements are there. They gather certain data and in national level they gather certain data. So we have to minimize, we have to mitigate actually these uh, data duplication issues. And uh, the most important thing is actually what we should do is we have to uh, think about the data generating point. So uh, without collecting data from divisional or regional level, the best way is to collect the data from the uh, uh, place where the data is generated. So likewise, we can get the data. And, uh, and uh, the other thing is, most of the time as administrators, as uh, data managers, what we are doing is we, 
we th think about our necessity, our need, our urgent need, and we do not think about our customers. So uh, my request is we have to think about our customers, our teachers, principals, uh, students. So they should have a need to give us data. Otherwise, what we do is uh, we force them or we uh, ask them, we pressurize them to give us data but there should uh, we should address their needs then only we can get proper or reliable data or accurate data uh, so for an instance if it is a school uh, so that uh, the data that we collect should be useful for the students or uh, maybe their parents so if uh, when we collect term test marks if the t if the students can see their progress uh, they, they can visualize the, that progress through our data system uh, that will be really motivating them to give us data. Even for the teachers, that's the same. And sometimes we can give uh, the parents the opportunity to uh, see the, uh, uh, their students' results. Uh, so their uh, students' achievements, then only they, they are uh, motivating uh, to give us uh, accurate data. So I think uh, to uh, mitigate those challenges, those are my suggestions. We should have a proper plan actually, what we are going to collect and what is our endpoint and what is our vision. And so we have to have that and we have to have a good discussion, suggestion like this. We have to have good conversation with all the local and international level and we can get good insights and we should have a proper plan. And then we should think about the need of our customers. Then only they are uh, trying to give us the uh, reliable and curate data. So that is my viewpoint. Thank you. Okay, thank you, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think now time is up, uh, so we have to end up here. Uh, to uh, uh, yeah. I just uh, highlight one more point, uh, just to elaborate the thing. Just. Uh, uh, Ms. Prabhani said in a technical way, we, we have, I mean, we have two dimensions in the data uh, collection. One is actually data capturing and visualization and other part is actually uh, uh, digitalization of the processes. So in our experience, both agree on the same point. In our experience, uh, the useful and efficient way is when we digitalize the process, the end user will benefit from that. So automatically we, we can purify the data and the data collection becomes very much easy. So if we collect the data for just for the sake of collecting the thing for and use for our need to decide to decision making or to policy making, then it's a bit difficult. So the end user thinks that it's, it's a uh, issue for them. So we have to couple that uh, both two dimensions, data capture and visualization and data uh, process, uh, I mean uh, digitalizing the process. So if we can uh, couple that two dimensions, then uh, I think we can have a successful journey. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now I cordially invite Ms. Sophia to continue the session.